Hello, I'm Mark Shashua, CEO at I2I Events Group, and I'm delighted to welcome you to one in a series of videos that we have developed in partnership with the UK Trade and Investment. Our aim is to provide insight and guidance to help you successfully grow sales in overseas markets. This video features an interview with Sir Ian Cheshire, the Group Chief Executive at Kingfisher, which is a hugely successful global retail group that includes B&Q and has stores here in the UK, Ireland and China, and Castorama in France, Poland and Russia. I hope you find it useful. I think um, there are three main reasons why British businesses ought to think about international expansion. Firstly, there is just a great set of markets out there, much bigger than you will ever be able to access in the UK uh, mark, domestic market. Um, secondly, I, I think we should be a bit more confident about the brands and the businesses we have in the UK. I think we've got great things to offer, and um, there are customers out there around the world uh, that would be interested in discovering, particularly uniquely British approach. Um, so there, there are things that we generally have got to offer customers around, around the world. I think the third thing is that if you can build an international business, it gives you both diversity and that greater scale, which if you're trying to develop your business in the longer term, I think you know, it should be a business that can go to multiple places. Uh, and we've certainly found at Kingfisher, having a spread of businesses around the world uh, makes the overall business more resilient and we benefit from the scale. I think when you're thinking about expanding internationally, the most important thing to do is do your homework first. And there is no such thing as going international. You're essentially going to a set of markets. And um, obviously there are some great bits of advice you can get, notably UKTI and uh, uh, embassies and consulates around the world. And I definitely encourage people to go and, and, and uh, go there as their first port of call. But do your homework and essentially understand, um, I think, really two things. You know, will your business concept travel into a different country with a different set of uh, economics, different set of competitors? And secondly, you know, what, what's the best way of putting a toe in the water? How can you find a way of testing something learning and increasingly for a lot of businesses now you can test via the internet without actually having to go there so if you can do your research and then figure out how to test it without making a huge commitment up front uh, you can establish a list of countries you can go to and I think it's it's probably easier than people think when they sit there and sort of wondering about it for the first time. I think British businesses have got two big advantages when we think about internationalization um, firstly, it may be a bit obvious, but you know, English is the global language. We already have capabilities. Uh, you can actually trade quite successfully around the world using English without having to become completely local. And um, it sounds obvious, but I really wouldn't underestimate it. It's very different if you're a Spanish company trying to say to come to the UK. But I think the, the other thing is that we, uh, you know, culturally and historically, have always traded with the whole world. And I think we are more open, we're more flexible and we're more, uh, I think, attuned to the, ad the adaptation uh, that you have to have to be successful locally. Um, and I think it's been very interesting in retail sector seeing you know, retailers going around the world, which is not easy. Uh, and the British retailers have had great success, I think, because of that cultural openness and flexibility. I think if you're thinking about the UK's unique strengths and the business's unique strengths, um, I, I would probably say, look, there are loads of things that people bring to it, but if I've had to group them, there may be three areas where I think the Brits um, generally do well. Um, there's one set which is around, um, I suppose, the sort of heritage, premium quality, playing to the, the traditional aspect of um, great British brands. And uh, I think that's, that's there in some of the, the great Britain branding that we've, we've seen um, develop around the world. I think the second bit is that there is a strong uh, heritage and a strong grouping of British brands around innovation, specialist firms doing interesting things and, and everything from Dyson to Formula One cars, that there is a real legacy of high value added, interesting, innovation led. I think the third thing is, is um, slight, slightly different, which is I think there is far more in the way of um, service capability in the UK than in certain other countries. So I think we are world leaders in particularly things like professional services and respected because of the cultural background that we have there. Well, Kingfish is operating now in nine countries around the world. Most of our profit comes from international markets outside the UK. Um, I would just offer three bits of learning again to individuals or businesses thinking about this. Firstly, really, really do your homework on the countries. Um, you have to have a specific country strategy. It's not good enough to have an international strategy. So prioritize your countries, do your homework, really think about it. 
Secondly is, is develop a way of trying to test your way into countries rather than make big one-time commitments. You will almost certainly not get it right perfectly the first time, so you have to have the flexibility to develop and, and test and learn. Uh, and, and thirdly, I would really pay attention to the quality of management you put on it. This is not something you give to the sort of the last person with an hour left on a Friday to think about it. You've got to invest in decent quality people. And I think learn from the experiences of others. And obviously, UKTI and, and, and the, uh, the rest of the government support that's out there has got a huge amount of uh, knowledge and data to share and can put you in touch with people who've gone through a similar experience. I think when we look around the world and try and work out where the potential is for British business, um, there, it is, there are some very different trends there. And I think um, it will obviously depend, again, a bit on the sector and the competition you, you're in. So I don't think there's a sort of one-size-fits-all. Um, but I think I would group it into th three main geographic type of opportunities. Firstly is Europe, which actually technically is our biggest trading partner, and there are some advantages of proximity and cultural fit there. And the fact we have got a single market, which makes it somewhat easier than in some of the other markets to operate, even if it's a collection of countries in the EU. I think, although it's seen as mature, I would actually put Europe, for most of our British companies, as, as, the, as the quickest win to get. Second area, and obviously is huge, is the US. And we have, again, an affinity given the language. But I think it's important to recognize there that the US is different. They may speak English, but it's a very different country. And it's there are a lot of big competitors there. But I think, naturally, there is, particularly in certain areas like high tech, there's an obvious affinity. And the third group is the developing countries, including, critically, China. And I think there, um, there are some challenges for, for companies um, because some of these markets are not nearly as developed as, as they are, but long-term growth opportunities are probably more in those markets than some of the existing areas. And I think I would suggest that you need to think about which one of those you do in what priority, and are there particular reasons that your particular product or services fit better in, in one market or another. But all three, given their different dynamics, are great opportunities. I think international businesses look at British businesses and British bands and recognize, um, I, I think, two strong positives that we bring. Firstly, I think we are trusted as brands in the international community for the way we do business, the integrity, the governance structures we have, and the willingness to be open and transparent. And that is you know, something of an advantage around the world, which I don't think everyone has. I think, secondly, there is a, a sense that there are some really interesting British businesses doing different things. And so I'm not sure we would be the place to go to for a big commodity purchase of, say, steel. But value-added, interesting businesses, service-led businesses, points of originality, the creative industries, um, there are lots and lots of areas in which the UK is a world leader, uh, clearly, obviously, financial services. And really, I think we've got a sector um, capability and reputation in those areas, which we should be um, justly proud of.